Okay, Legends, I hope you're all amazing. That is the glorious sound of the new Strymon Big Sky MX. It's the Big Sky Evolved. You can run any two reverb algorithms at once in this new pedal. You've got all the classic Big Sky sounds plus a bunch of new and improved algorithms in here. They've pretty much gone and touched up all the classic modes like Spring Plate Hall. They've added new sounds. They've added things like the Ensemble mode from the Cloudburst. They've added a Ping Pong mode to Magneto in there. So you could use this as a standalone delay and reverb if you liked. It's like a true multi-effects unit on there. You've got the updated OLED screen on here, which is a lot easier to read. And it also gives you access to all of the functions on here. For example, if I wanted to adjust the feedback on here, it will tell you where the previous value was set and then very clearly show you where you've got any parameter set in here. I mentioned that you can run any two reverbs at the same time, right? There's actually multiple ways that you can do that in a dual routing form over here. You can see that you can just use a single algorithm in here, or you can run them in parallel, run one into two in series, two into one in series, or you can have split modes on here so that you can send a totally different reverb algorithm to each output on here. There is USB-C on the back. You can use the expression pedal input as a TRS MIDI jack. There are the same MIDI input and output jacks that the original Big Sky had on here and IR reverb, which is very, very cool. Not only that, they give you a bunch of different ways to essentially expand on the impulse response based reverb. So there's a lot going on here. I think this is probably going to exceed what a lot of people thought the Big Sky version two would be. They are still going to manufacture the old Big Sky as well. So essentially you've got the small format Cloudburst, you've got the Blue Sky, which is now in its second iteration. You've got the classic Big Sky and now you have the Big Reverb Workstation, the Big Sky MX on here. One thing that I loved about the original Big Sky was how good the stock preset sounded. So let's do this. Let's come out here and I'll just show you how you can navigate through this. So much like on the original Big Sky, you've got buttons to navigate through presets, but now you have a dedicated infinite and hold foot switch over here. You press any two foot switches at the same time, you can bank up and select different presets. You've got your parameters laid out over here on knobs and you get a nice piece of visual feedback over here. So if you want to dial something in precisely, you can do that, or you can just twist knobs and have some fun on there. Furthermore, you've got the ability to go in if you press this value button over here and get access to all the different parameters as a list and your advanced settings on there. If you hold this, it will cycle backwards on there. You can scroll through presets using this. And of course, if you wanna edit a preset, you can change the modes using the mode selector up here. So let's just go to preset number one. Like I said earlier, one great thing about the original Big Sky was just how good the preset sounded out of the box. I do have an expression pedal hooked up in here so I can use that to control the mix on here. Let's just start out with a nice little clean sound on the neck tapped mode of my PRS DGT. We'll hear this bypassed and then engage. <laughs> That's absolutely gorgeous. It is so smooth and it sits under that clean sound really effortlessly. In the release notes that I read for this, Strymon mentioned that they are using some neural network models. If you like the buzzword AI, you can call it AI. I'm gonna go with neural network models on here to reduce ringing and to get a really natural decay out of the new reverb algorithms in here. Furthermore, basically the left 
half of all the algorithms listed on here have been totally reworked. But if you want the classic Big Sky version of, say, the hall or the plate, you can press the value knob over here and you can come down to the voice selection over here and you can select MX, which is the new updated version, or you can select classic on here. You'll also notice in the hall, you've got parameters for swell. So if you want to get in there and set up a swell style reverb, like on the old Big Sky, you can do that. And stuff like, say, the, I believe it's the Bloom and the Cloud, they have some new modes and features that you can get access to. We will get to those, though. The big thing on here is because this has so much power, you can run up to 10 seconds of IR-based reverb on here. So let's just go to the second preset because I think there's a really good example of that on there. So you see it is set to the impulse style over here. If I go into the values, you can come in and tweak the low end on there. Then you can select different impulses. Then you can kind of go beyond just a classic convolution reverb IR loader and actually mess with things like the attack. You can time stretch the reverb on there. You can play around with the tail. So you can have a uh, classic envelope or you can gate it on there. You can even play around with the direction and add feedback on there. So if you want to have, say, a spring and have it played backwards, you can do that on there. Uh, let's actually hear that because this is a reverse spring at the moment. I'm going to go to forward over here, click that, and we get classic spring reverb style sound. There are a bunch of great sounding factory reverb IRs in here. If you're used to the world of freely available reverb IRs, there are some classics that you will notice in here. What I do like is that you've got real spaces and then IRs taken of physical reverb units. So you can see in here, there's some EMT 140 plates, some EMT 250 reverbs in here. You've got a bunch of real spaces. You've got some weird spring reverbs in here. My favorite in here is the Lexicon 480 Hall. And again, Strymon have captured some classic studio gear themselves. They mentioned in one of their release notes that they've kind of come up with their own method for capturing IR. So it will be interesting to see if they make that available because you know I'd love to capture some IRs from like my Eventide H3000 or some of my rare old rack reverbs and load them in here. And you will be able to load your own IRs again up to 10 seconds in here. Let's hear this 480 haul first on a clean sound and then with some grease. <laughs> probably dedicate an entire video just to the impulse section. 
loading in some weird or non-traditional IRs and then combining them with some of the algorithmic reverbs would be super fun. Let me know if you'd like to see that video in the comments section below, but we'll move on to what myself and probably a lot of other people would consider the killer app with the Big Sky MX, the ability to run two algorithms at the same time and route them in multiple ways. I'll give you an example. This is a preset that I put together really quickly. I played it in the intro with all that distortion. We'll hear it clean now. Basically, it is the cloud reverb running into the shimmer reverb over here. So if I press this selection encoder over here, you can see I've got the shimmer on there. Then I can select the routing mode. I've got it in series at the moment. I'll change it to parallel and then we'll do one of the split modes on here. So you'll hear one algorithm on the left channel and another on the right channel. It's a kind of classic studio trick. You know, you could have a really short room and then a longer hall on one side. You could have your shimmer on one side and your cloud on the other. Actually, before we do that, I should mention in here that with the cloud, I am using the ensemble setting in here. So this is lifted from their cloud burst pedal, which I love the sound of. So ensemble is set to 12 over there. Let's exit out of this. And again, I will play around with the routing on here first. Let's hear it in series. This is pretty beautiful. <laughs> Pretty amazing in parallel, isn't it? I could also play around with what the infinite switch does on here. So you can come into the mode selector for infinite. You can have freeze infinite or you can have it off and then you can set whether you have the foot switch to be momentary or latching. I'm gonna set it to latching and what I'm gonna do is just play a big clean pad using that shimmer and the ensemble in parallel. Then I'll switch over to a dirty sound and solo over it. Mm. another example of a cool dual combination that I found and this is a much more let's say 
traditional multi-effect setup on here, I'm using Magneto as my first algorithm. And I've got it in parallel with the plate on here. I'm using the new MX plate. So what I could do is I could set up my plate reverb for a kind of just subtle space on here. You can see I've got about 1500 milliseconds over there. I can adjust, say, the pre-delay on here really quickly. I can play around with the reverb tone. I've got something slightly darker than usual on here. I could add some modulation to it. And then I've got the separate parameters over here. So for the plate, it's the low end, which I'm gonna crank up and I can have a large or a small plate over here. Let's go for a large plate. Then if I go back to Magneto on here, so let's come out of this, I can tweak that using the knobs or again, entering this value over here. So let's go for, I don't know, like 800 milliseconds. Well, that's closer to 900 milliseconds. No pre-delay on there. I'll make this a little bit brighter over there, a little bit of modulation on there. And the parameters again are the low end on there and the diffusion. So I'll turn diffusion down, but I might add a little bit of it on there just to kind of smear the repeats out. Then I'll crank the mix up over here so we can really hear it. So I've got a nice kind of subtle plate. I've got the magneto mode on there. If I want to get deeper into it, I can play around with the number of heads, the spacing on there. I have ping pong on, that is a new feature. I actually didn't have it on, I want to enable that on there. So I've got a ping pong magneto with a plate reverb in parallel. You know, I could probably just use this for like 90% of the lead tones I ever need in my life. <laughs> I do feel like I'm breaking the golden rule of reverb demos on here by using a lot of distortion on a lot of this video. Uh, please forward all your complaints to the comment section below. Let's play around with a couple of other presets on here because I just kind of want you to hear what some of the new algorithms sound like for the rest of the video. We've kind of gone over a lot of the killer features on here. I feel like I should probably just do a standalone video and just go through presets or sounds. I'm sure Strymon will probably put up a bunch of videos with each mode. I still remember when the original Big Sky launched that they uploaded a bunch of videos that just sounded incredible with some of the modes on there. Maybe we'll start out with some of the uh, kind of classic reverb styles on here, like the subtle stuff, rooms, plates, and halls over here. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I feel like on the Big Sky, it's one of those pedals where you can just roll with the presets on there and it's gonna give you a pretty cool idea of what the algorithms sound like on here. So let's come all the way over here. Let's just hear this tippy toes plate to get started again. I've got a slightly cleaner sound over here. I'll bypass it and then I will kick it in. <laughs>
So you would have noticed a few advanced parameters in there with the spring. There's a bunch of new dwell modes in here. So you've kind of got a very clean front end. You've got combo, tube, and overdrive on there. So you can really add some grit, crust, and character to the springs in there. If we come out of this mode over here, we would have seen with the plates, you can select between two different plate sizes in there. The chamber settings were really interesting in there. The color really changed things up on there. I like that deep mode on there. And I also really liked the clear mode. Smooth and crisp have their own thing going on as well. To me, that chamber algorithm in there is gonna be for all the people who really, really are reverb tweakers. You wanna get in there and kind of really fine tune the type of reverb that you want, whereas room, hall, plate, and spring, just kind of do what they say on the tin there. Again, there's this beautiful smoothness about everything. Everything just kind of blends in with your guitar tone. And like basically everything Strymon put out, it's inspiring to play on here. That's the most important thing. So let's just go through a bunch of sounds now with the uh, kind of non-traditional spaces over here. There's a bunch of really great presets with the non-linear mode over here. And I do just have to say, as an aside, this pedal's really easy to navigate on here. Strymon are working on Nixie 2, so a software-based editor where you will be able to like upload IRs into this and then control all the parameters on there. It's not out yet. I think the sooner that comes out for pedals like this and the Dig, another Strymon pedal I really love, the better because I might just kind of mount them in my studio rack, connect them via USB-C to my computer and then steer them from the software editor on there. But this is a lot easier than the V1 Big Sky to kind of navigate on here. I've only had this for a few hours and I found that it's all pretty intuitive on there to just kind of go through and again, use this like a kind of big reverb workstation. All right, having said that, let's find some absolutely freaky sounds on here. So the cloud on there, we heard some cloud, we heard some shimmer earlier, but uh, I'm just gonna play a couple of presets on here. We will start out with this silver screen cloud. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm gonna pull up stumps right there on this particular demo video. The Big Sky itself had so much going on in terms of creative reverb possibilities. The fact that this essentially gives you two Big Skies with a bunch of updated algorithms in there that you can route freely, that you have the option to add impulse response reverb to. You've got modern features like USB-C. There's the upcoming Nixie editor. You've got essentially the same form factor, just slightly improved with a bigger screen and the infinite switch available on board. You can have expression pedal connections on there, or you can use that with like a Strymon conduit or something like that. So you can have MIDI over TRS. It really drags the big sky into the 2020s, in my opinion. And whether you're just going to use this to load up your favorite Big Sky presets, which you can definitely do, whether you're gonna use it as a super creative combination of the IR loading and the new algorithmic reverbs, whether you're gonna use it as a multi-effects pedal to essentially say use Magneto for your delay tones and then some of the more subtle, smooth sounding spaces in there like the plates, rooms and halls, uh, it can kind of do everything on here. I think it lives up to the name of being a reverb workstation on here. And I'm super excited to see Strymon just kind of release another big box pedal on here. The Big Sky kind of blew everybody's mind when it came out over a decade ago. And this thing has been blowing my mind playing around with it. It's one of those things where, you know, Strymon just have a sound. And I say this in every single video on there, but they kind of nail the two most important aspects on here. One, the thing sounds amazing on there. And, you know, Pete Selly is an amazing sound designer. I can't wait to sit through and watch all the Strymon videos that come out with this pedal. But they've also just kind of nailed the plug it in, twist some knobs, get inspired factor, which is really, really hard. There's so many great sounding reverbs out there, but to have something that you can just plug into and instantly get inspired with and then also use it as like a studio tool if you want to, if you wanted to use the separate outputs on there, if you wanted to come up with completely new sounds from your old Big Sky presets, you could do that on there. Uh, I'm so curious to know how everybody feels about this because playing it hands-on is pretty amazing. The reverbs sound great. I'd love to know what's going on with the neural network applications that they're using in regards to reverb on here and where that's going to flow into some other technology on there. And I'm looking forward to seeing if, say, they add some impulse response packs on here so you can get a bunch of extra reverbs that they capture. And, you know, Strymon have been pretty good with their support over the years with updates. And again, they're just one of those companies where you can take the pedal out, start with the presets and have a bunch of fun. So that is it from me today. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Big Sky MX. Is this something that you're immediately gonna grab to replace your Big Sky? It's the fact that you can run two reverbs at the same time, something that maybe stopped you getting the original Big Sky. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments section below. Big thank you to David at Amber Music here in Australia for making this video happen. and. I would love it if you just all went and played some glorious guitar and made some noise today. If you like what I'm doing on the channel, links to my Patreon and the music that I make with my band Ragdoll. If you watched all the way through, you truly are a legend and I massively appreciate it. See you on the next one. Mm.